let's break the mold. Start believing and stop waiting for the other shoe to drop. Welcome to Wild on 7, presented by Pilot Games. We're here until it's here. All right, welcome back to Wild on 7th, your favorite wild podcast presented by Pilot Games. We got a lot of stuff to talk about today. We're going to get into Movember, the reverse retro jerseys, maybe a wellness check-in for some of the fans here, uh, maybe an update on our preseason bold predictions and many other things. But before we do that, I should introduce our guest for the day. Uh, he's the 97th pick of the 2000 draft from Lloyd Minster, Alberta. And no, that's not Time right. Out. We got to scratch that. We got to fix that to Wainwright, Alberta. Wainwright, Alberta. Oh, geez. All of our every, data is wrong. Every once in a while, I get that on a website that says Lloyd Minster. I played, I played hockey there for three years, kind of the, when you move away from your hometown and a little bit of elite hockey, I guess you'd call it, um, was in Lloyd Minster because we didn't have that in Wainwright, but hometown for me is Wainwright. Wainwright. Okay. Tell us about Wainwright. All right. Well, um, it's a small town. I want to say around... 5,000 people there. I think I had about 30 in my in my high school graduation class, but um, just a, a hardworking blue collar community um, kind of runs through the, the oil field and farming. So um, I guess it's, it's two things that, uh, um, you know, it's fairly, fairly simple back home and I really like that about it. So that's, so that's a family and friends are at, I guess. And that's a teaser now. So all of you listening, you have a chance to guess who our guest is because I still haven't introduced him yet. Um, he also has a master's degree or so we think he does in physical therapy now. Uh, it's Mason Shaw, number 58 in your program, uh, number one in Wainwright's heart. Would that be yeah, fair to I say? Yeah, I like that. I think we'll go along with that. And yeah, yeah. The, the master's in the, the ACL reconstruction. <laughs> I, well, I tell you what, uh, in all seriousness, thanks for joining us. Um, you look great. You smell great. Fresh out of the shower. Uh, there was a rumor that, that you wanted to be fresh for us, and we appreciate that because Duke Cannon, sponsor of this segment, can you tell us about it? Yeah, they take care of our interview guests. So, Shazi, whatever you want there, they're pushing the holiday stuff. So maybe if you wanted to look, give a gift to Beckman or something, you got some Rudolph soap, Frothy the beer man. I know you had your eye on this Bush beer soap. Yeah, You're there's... about to go on a road trip. You got a handsome man travel kit. And then in front of all the soaps are like the pomades and the flow hair stuff. This and... is the essentials right here for a road trip. I, I think uh, I'm going to What do you want to go with? Well, you want I'll, want probably, I'll probably take the, the Bush light beer soap with me. And, and since we want to get festive, maybe the, the coughs are up the sound edition here so that's, it that's is a good uh choice good choice. halloween's yeah. over my birthday's over so it is time to get in the christmas spirit for myself anyways what did you do for your birthday november 3rd so you just came off of it did you did you get any gifts or did you get a nice uh, dinner i think we we played a hockey game i'm pretty sure yeah um did, is that the cracking game yeah i didn't quite go our way so that wasn't no that that's wasn't not a, a good gift birthday. by any means so um my parents were in town it was nice for that but other than that the uh, the birthday wasn't wasn't the greatest day with finishing with the loss. Did, but did any they, gifts? No, no gifts. Did they take you out to dinner? No, it was a game day. I mean, I guess after the game, yeah, I did. So I went and grabbed a quick bite tea with them after, and then um, went and hung out with some of the guys after the game. That's what's weird about the NHL is like your parents take you out, but like you feel obligated to get the bill, right? So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Things are a little bit different. I got now. this one, mom. Things yeah. are a little bit different. I get to I get to spoil them when they come here and buy them a dinner for all the years that, that they did for me. So I, I want to touch on the shower before we get too far behind this because we talked about this leading up to it. Uh, are you a one-towel guy, two-towel guy? I, I'll get as many as I can. I'm definitely taking two. You're a two-towel guy. I'm a two-towel guy. High maintenance. Guy. And I think in this league, it's a two-towel league. It's a two-towel sure. league no matter what. So when I, <laughs> I go take a quick look in the shower and I see about 200 towels, I figure I'm going to be all right to take two. That's a, You see the stack? All right, it's a two-towel yeah, league. Yeah. It's the NHL. I've never even heard of two towels. So it's shoulders for the second one? Shoulders yeah. for the second one, I yeah, suppose. Yeah, you drape it over, go comb your hair and put some lotion on or clean your pits up. I don't know. You, yeah. you, got, well, you got one over the shoulder for sure. No, never the beehive, done. Marge Simpson, maybe three towels. <laughs> no. Maybe no. Felino does that. Maybe a little down low. You got to have some beautiful hair for that. Yeah, yeah. maybe Johnny gets three going because he's yeah. got quite a bit of hair there. For me, I only need two. God, two towel league. Didn't know. Yeah. So you grew up on a farm. Is that like, so what were the farm duties or what was, what was your upbringing like? I think, um, well, first off, it's a lot, it's a lot different than I feel like most people um, around the game of hockey grew up in. I think that my teammates over the years have always had an interest in it and a lot of questions, but um, I think that it, it's helped me 
learn some, some work habits just from, you know, taking care of animals. Like, you know, these cows aren't going to feed themselves by any means and, and you got to take care of them. So, I mean, anything from, from putting the crops up to, to feeding them daily to checking fences and then, you know, the whole process of them having their calves and babies in the spring. So, um, it kind of just depends what time of year it is in terms of what, what duty is needed, but, um, it's definitely, uh, um, a 365, uh, a job for sure. So cattle, is that the, the main yeah. thing on the farm is yeah. cattle? Yeah, cattle, um, Alberta Manager, beef. Angus Cross, Alberta beef, the best there is. Wow. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's all we got there. We got, turns out we're not going to give you this stuff. We're going to trade you and your family. Yes. Just slap a steak down here and then you can have anything. We might have want. to, we might have to double the, the beer soap, <laughs> beer soap then if that's the, the case. Price of, the price of beef these days, you're going to have to, we're yeah, gonna exactly. It's going up. So should we good. warm them up here? Yeah, okay. let's do it. We're going to do a little rapid fire with you. Perfect. Okay, so these are quick answers. No hesitation. One-timers. Ready? Yeah. Nickname? Shazi. Weirdest thing in your overnight bag? Pass. What do you listen to in the car? Country. It's your birthday. Where are you going to dinner? In Minneapolis? Anywhere. Anywhere. The spot? Um, The Red Cow. Where's that? St. Paul, I've been there a lot, so that's just the first one that comes to mind, and I like it. I like the name of it, too. You could have a green light in any NHL city. Where do you want to be? Montreal. Hockey jersey you had as a kid? Alish Hemsky, 83 Oilers. Pre-game meal? Pass to vodka sauce. Uh, Go-to drink at the bar? Bush Light or rum and coke. Perfect weekend. What are you doing? Uh, we're winning a hockey game on Friday. Um, we got Saturday off, so we're probably going to go have <laughs> some some manly drinks afterwards. And um, Saturday, hit the sun up and do it again. Sunday, football all day with some wings. God, it's Which football? Out. Canadian? No, we're, football. we're not watching the CFL. <laughs> That's You know what? I didn't know a thing about football, to be honest, really, until I came down here a couple years ago when I got into... When Fantasy I was, with when the I was in mates? Iowa, and we still have the league Like to this day. It's awesome. It's a good way to keep in touch with everybody, but... Um, I'm a, I'm a diehard football fan now, and sometimes when we have games on Sunday, it disappoints me a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, you can't. Do you have a there. team? Like, are you rooting for a specific team, or are you just all fantasy? Yeah, I am. Um, I, I didn't have a team when I came down here my first year. My quarter auto drafted and everything, so I didn't have a clue about any of the players, and it put Josh Allen on my team. So I found myself watching the Buffalo Bills a lot. This is a big week, then. They play the Vikings this week. I know. So, I'm a public enemy number one around here, I think. <laughs> our hidden talent. Um, karaoke. What? Whoa. Go to song. Oh Anything, Toby Keith. Wow. So you're good at karaoke, like you can sing well. I like to think so, and I, I feel like I'm not shy to do it either. Wow, we're gonna God. need something here at some point. Gift card from any store. Where would you want it from? Um, uh, honestly, I hate shopping. Um, Liquor Barrel. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Last thing you binge watched? Uh, Friday Night Lights. Oh, so good. Yeah, good I think I've watched that three times. This guy's times. all in on American football. He's, he's yeah. like, this, this yeah, is how exactly. serious he is about fantasy football. He's like, I want to find out right. the roots. I want to know. I need to yeah. learn from Coach Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> Texas forever. Yeah. Uh, buying clothes, where do you go? Mall of America, because I think there's enough selection there. Nordstrom Rack, maybe. Favorite holiday? Christmas. Who plays you in the movie? Matt Damon. Ooh, I, I like that. that. I, I do that. see it, too. How do you like them apples? That was a good one. I got a couple, too. Uh, all right, your pet peeve? Snoring. Room, well, I guess I don't have a roommate anymore, but roommates on the road that snore. Welcome to the National League. <laughs> yeah. That's nice. That's a nice touch. Who do you text the most? Connor Dewar. Oh, nice. Uh, Netflix account. You have your own, or are you stealing your parents' account? <laughs> I'm, on, I'm on Aaron and Lindsay Shaw's account still. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. And then uh, last one, I don't know. I always ask this one. I, I think it's intriguing. Like you sign your first check or you get your first check. You buy yourself anything? I haven't. I haven't. Uh, I didn't go anything too crazy with the signing. But I went from having zero dollars in my life to, to money that I didn't really have a purpose for at that point, to be honest. So um, I still drive my same truck I've drove since I was 17. Um, and I absolutely love it. And I'm going to drive that thing till it dies on me. Oh, nice. That's awesome. God, you're like a folk hero, man. People yeah, you're are like to love you. you all of a sudden. <laughs> you do Morgan Wallen? I can sing some Morgan Wallen, too. Actually, I bought a guitar last year, and by no means am I, am I a yeah. poet by any means, but I think that's something that would be so cool to to get to that point where you can kind of just pick it up and, and play anything. So um, 
it's down in Iowa still right now, but I need to get that in my hands again. To Let's get, get that working. guitar from Iowa. Someone yeah. got to bring it yeah, up. Yeah, help me out, please. Good producer could do that. Zach Bryan, you got to snap those fingers. Go deep on him. Too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so, okay, the the farm you grew up, chores on the farm, Angus beef. How much hockey are you playing? Like, is that all you did in the winter? It's um, oh, what's going on here? I'm he didn't use enough Duke Cannon. He didn't <laughs> yeah. use enough Duke Cannon. Um, no, I mean. It, cold as hell at, in, at home in the winters, um, but always had outdoor rinks. I feel like it back home, the winters are very similar to what they are here and um, growing up very similar styles. So, um, you know, I played hockey all winter and, and if it wasn't, uh, you know, with the organization I was with, you were playing with your buddies on an outdoor rink. My dad always built one. So, um, and then just any sort of, any sort of activity you could do in the snow, I was doing it. So uh, very similar to how I would say kids spend their, their winters in Minnesota too. Man, I love that. I've seen people put like outdoor rinks in like an outdoor barn, kind of, which is awesome. Um, no, that's that's great. So you fell in love with the game of hockey out in your backyard? Yeah, practically. I mean, probably on the skates at three or four. Um, you know, my dad always says I walked around with a mini stick in the house. That's not something I can remember, but you know, kind of like it was meant to be, really. Herding cattle with a stick. Herding. Oh, you know, the broken sticks go home too. That's what we, that's what Dad uses to chase the cows around with is the broken sticks at home. So I always have to make sure I take a few back that for is him. So great. Jesus, this is <laughs> not even real. Like Taylor Sheridan is gonna make a show about Mason Shaw. It's like after yeah, we Yellowstone. Gotta, we got to get back to Wainwright one of these days and 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 so, show you guys what it's like around there. It's awesome. I got, go I got a Wainwright question because I love that you corrected that this is your real hometown. Um, yeah. So if Karts and I were going to Wainwright and wanted to do it up right, where are you sending us? Like, give us like the evening and maybe the next day when we're a little banged up. Where do we get? Where do we go to breakfast? Like, well, well here's the thing: is we got for well, we'll start the day for breakfast and yes, we're probably just we're probably gonna have to go to my grandma Betty's first because the only other breakfast place in town is the Husky Truck Stop. So Ooh. and that's gonna be packed on a Sunday too. So, um, but we'll go we'll go to the Husky Truck Stop and. Um, you know, I think we're probably going to go jump around from shop to shop out around the farm. The thing is, all my friends and, and, and family, we all we all live within five minutes of each other. So you don't have to go too far to to find a, a beer in a cold fridge. So, And then I think at the end of the night, we're going to go to Mojo's, which is about the one bar in town. And um, if you want anyone to be there, you got to send a text out for the town to get there, else it's going to be pretty quiet. But every, <laughs> every you know, three to four times a year, it's it's the spot to be. It takes one invite and the place is packed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's get this Becoming Wild episode going now, Wainwright. I'm <laughs> ready. I'm picturing Happy Gilmore, you know, when he steps in front of the batting cages and just eats the fastballs. I mean, you're a tough cookie, too. You've got the electric fences, I'm sure, for the cattle. You just yep. go out and bite them or you grab them. Like, you... Well, not on purpose, but I've definitely got a hold of one where you get a good zap for sure. Does it so, get you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It runs right through you pretty good. Well, you got to think it's got to it's gotta be enough to deter a 2,000 to 1,000 pound animal away from it. So you get zapped by it, it's, it'll put you on your butt for sure. <laughs> That's crazy. Man, I could ask you a 1,000 questions about the farm because... I've gotten into the weeds. Like it's what I watch on YouTube yeah. all the time now. Yeah. Like there's one that's a millennial farmer. He's more of like a, like a crop farmer, mm -hmm. soybeans and stuff. But there's another one I watch. It's uh, just a few acres farm on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, he's got like saying like 20 cattle yeah. and it's just yeah. kind of fun to watch. Yeah. So he keeps chickens and stuff. But I, anyway, so we got to pivot back to hockey. When did you find out or when did you realize like you're good at it, that you're a player? Uh, I mean, I think just just growing up, you were all, I was always able to play on like a spring hockey team or a summer team that would you know kind of an invite only, and um, I was able when I moved to when we went and played hockey in Lloyd. I mean that was my first little bit of elite hockey I ever had. So at that point, I guess you're probably 14 to 16 through there kind of thing or those ages, and um, probably when once you're going through junior, you're like you know I think if I really dedicate everything I have to this, that something could could come from it, and um, you know, getting drafted. To, I played junior hockey in uh, Medicine Hat, which is probably three hours from my hometown in Alberta there. Um, you know, we had some success and some good teams there. So, you know, I feel like maybe getting drafted by Minnesota was the first time I was like, you know, this this could be a chance for me kind of thing. And um, I remember somebody once telling me at the draft, I can't remember who it was. It was someone at the Minnesota table. They're like, don't be the last time this is, you know, you put this jersey on kind of thing, right? Because 
there's still so much work to do after the draft and, you know, so many steps to, to get to the point of playing in the NHL. But that was definitely something that, that stood out to me was, you know, don't don't let this be the last time you put the jersey on. So a lot of the people that will be listening to this probably know the Minnesota path to the NHL, which is high school hockey. And your hope is to maybe play junior uh, and then keep your college eligibility, play college hockey, then potentially you, you play maybe East Coast, American Hockey League, then the NHL. It's kind of the, yeah. the, the Minnesota path. As a Canadian kid, uh, like, like you know, like at eighteen or like sixteen, you're like all right, if I'm gonna do this, I gotta be like you have to be drafted, or then you have to be mm-hmm. good by twenty, because like you're almost aged out at twenty, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, one thing, you know, being from Canada, you, you watch the WHL growing up. That's where all the best players went. So that was where I wanted to play. Um, my dad always made me aware of the college options, and he he honestly tried to to steer me a little bit more that way in a sense of not to go there, but just to keep your options open. And I was 15 and, and all I wanted to do is play in the Western Hockey League. I was drafted in Medicine Hat. So for me, it was an absolute no brainer. That's where I was going, where um, he tried to maybe keep my options open a little bit more. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, everyone's past different. It worked out for me. Uh, I wouldn't really, I wouldn't change a thing about how it went, but um, definitely for the, the Canadians to, you know, go through pro hockey, it's definitely a little bit different stride, but I feel like um, more Canadians are also going down to, to school now and definitely making it, you know, we're more aware of it for sure. What's the WHL like? I mean, it's a it's a tough league, and, and I, I don't know. I never played in it, but the Western League seems tougher than the Eastern Canadian leagues, and you said it's, what, three hours from your hometown? Yeah, for me, I feel like um, the WHL compared to the, the other leagues, I think, you know, this is going to go against some of the guys in, in the locker room, like Midsy or someone who played in the OHL, but I definitely think it's it's grittier. It's a grittier <laughs> yeah, league. That's what I've the heard. Travelers, the travel's harder. Um, you know, you, you span over over three or four provinces. So, um, you know, it makes you grow up quick. You're, you know, I think I started when I was 15 down there turning 16, and it makes you grow up fast because you're away from your parents. And, um, you know, you're, you're essentially living with strangers, you know, yeah. that, you, that, become your, that become your family. So um, just grow up really fast. But... Um, like I said, I think it's it definitely helped me a lot to get to this point. So uh, you've had the you mentioned you had your minor in uh, ACL surgery. Um, yeah. So three times you've had the knee, and so you must be one competitive son of a bitch, huh? How do you come back from three ACLs? What's your mentality? How did you approach that stuff? I mean, that's I mean to hear your story. This shouldn't be the last time you put a wild sweater on. I mean, you've had a road to get here, man. How uh, and kudos to you. But how do you battle like that? Yeah, I, I appreciate that. But I think, you know, the first time it happened, it's like, well, hockey, you know, injuries happen in this game. Um, I was young. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't concerned about, you know, not getting back to full health. I was just upset I couldn't play hockey at that time. And then yep. you have a few more happen and, you know, you're kind of like, man, you know, and you start to get labeled, you know, the injury bug a little bit or a Band-Aid or whatever. Yeah, you don't and, want to be labeled. Like yeah, that. exactly. That's the last thing I wanted. And and just some tough, you know, they're not just, you know, a couple months in back. You know, these are ending my seasons and, at that time, you're a young kid. You feel like you're you're falling behind a little bit, but um, I feel like I gained a ton of gratitude for the game of hockey when you're not able to join your teammates. I mean, sometimes these you know it can get hard. It can feel like a lot, but when it's taken away from you and you're at home sitting in Wainwright while your teams are are going out and battling, it's you would give anything to be back for that. So, um, I mean, I think there was a lot of perseverance. I had you know a lot of good support in my corner to keep me going and. and keep me going in the right direction in terms of of what I wanted to do one day but um, playing uh, being a hockey player is always the only thing I want to do so getting through these injuries yeah it was it was brutal but it's what I wanted to do so I was willing to I guess so 58 the number right now looks like you've had 18 23 are we doing 58 are we gonna wait a little longer and eventually it's a different number where are we at with the number situation uh well growing up I always wore 15 because my dad played hockey growing up um you know back home winter and that's that was what he wore so that's what i had growing up and then when i went to junior um someone else had it so i had 18 so i had 18 for my whole junior career and that's what i what i was wearing in iowa so um but hey if if when i'm wearing 58 it's a good that's a good thing so yeah, you won't complain i'm not gonna complain about wearing 58 and um, I got I got no problems with it right now, so I'll just I'll just shut my mouth and wear it and go yeah. <laughs> and just wait for that little tap on the shoulder. Or, hey, what what number do you actually want to wear? And then you yeah. get to pick on. Yeah, yeah, if I get the tap one day, I mean that's that's something we can reconsider at that time. But but for now, fifty eight is fifty eight is awesome. So the first ACL injury was when Traverse was, City. No, my I was uh, first ACL. I was 
I was 16 in Medicine Hat when it happened. I ha it happened in the summer, but I wasn't uh, able to get an MRI for like four months kind of thing because it took so long to get in. So I had this ACL tear that I didn't know about, but I trained all summer, skated, and I'm like, okay, this isn't well, right. it's not right, but it's good enough to go play for a while anyways. Like I, yeah. I trained all summer, so we had a scheduled surgery in the middle of the season, got it done in December. Um, then fast forward a few years, uh, I get drafted, had some Hockey Canada opportunities, felt like I was kind of riding on a little bit of a high. And then tore it in Traverse City when I was 18 or 19, I think. And that's the other knee? or That was my other one. So now okay. I got a left and a right. And then uh, my first year pro in playoffs against Milwaukee tore it. You know, middle playoffs, another you know, freak incident in the corner where you know it's, it's screwed right away. So after the third one, I just, I remember, you know, going into the room after. I didn't even see a doctor yet or hadn't got nothing diagnosed. That sucks. I, I knew it was, that I knew sucks. it was done. I remember throwing my helmet in the room and. Mitch McLean wasn't playing at the time. One of my best friends of this day, good Minnesota boy. And, you know, I just remember looking at him being like, I'm done. Like, it's over for me. And obviously a little emotional and overreacting right away. But definitely uh, had some moments where I wasn't sure if I would. So that was the, which knee was that? The third one? was it Back the, to the left side. So, so it's the first one yeah. and the third one yeah. were the same. Yeah. So I've, Dr. Boyd's done two of my two of my surgeries uh, here in Minnesota. And he does a great job. So hopefully... Uh, those are the end of those. But yeah, me this and Dr. Is, Boyd got a we got a good thing going. This is him. plywood. It looks like nice plank wood. It's plywood, oh, it's but it still counts yeah, if you we're knock gonna need on to it. This yeah, it still right. counts if you knock on it. And we're knocking on it then. <laughs> hey, I was gonna ask, you know, you know a lot of the Iowa guys, but coming up to the big club here, who have been some of the personalities that have welcomed you into the room, sort of, you know, just fun the beauties, I guess, in the wild locker room. Who have been some of the guys that you feel have made the transition easier for you? Uh, like in terms of guys I've played with or the guys? Uh, New guys. So not the yeah, guys you sure. knew from Iowa, well, but kind of like. And we yeah. hear a lot about the culture in Minnesota. And, uh, like it's it's good. It's yeah. accepting. Like you feel valuable right off mm -hmm. the bat. Like those kind of guys. Like Absolutely. I mean, I'm going to I'm gonna feel bad, you know, even go down the list yeah, and leaving yeah, yeah. guys out. But, um, I mean, guys like John Merrill, just, just extremely, well, first off, a great dude. Just cool character. And it takes all kinds of personalities, right? I feel like that's what makes this team so good is. You've got, you know, you got guys who are screaming and yelling all the time. You got guys who are a little more quiet and reserved. You know, Freddie Goudreau is the nicest guy you're ever going to meet in the world. He'd, he'd do anything for you, a little more reserved. And then, you know, you have, you have Dums who's, who's yelling all the time and bringing sure. energy. So, yeah. um, I, I mean, there's, those are just a couple names that I, that I mentioned. And then, obviously, you know, Do, Duhay, and Bolds, guys I played with in Iowa. Just um, so much fun to, to rekindle with these guys and be doing it at this level and, um, you know, I, someone like Zuki, I, I just find myself staring at him and wanting to be around him at all time because it could be an eyebrow raise and I feel like I'm laughing from it. Like, yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah. yeah, he's it's a honor around the room. It's awesome. It's so, you know, you, everyone here in the culture, it's been talked about. And, um, you know, I felt that right away. So looking up to Johnny Merrill, it looks like you might be growing out your duster a little bit right now. Is it, uh, is that, is that true? Yeah, I got, I'm trying to get something going here and I didn't cheat at all this year. So whatever day we were on here, is it the seventh or eighth yeah, day? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's eight is, days growth this, right there. Yeah, that's eight days growth. No so fertilizer? No fertilizer. We might have to zoom in on it a little bit with the camera here, but. Um, Can you turn on the red sensing lights? Yeah. Is, is there a little red in there? Yeah, there's some red there too. There's some red. So, um, I don't know if it's kind of grows out pretty blonde, so it's hard to see, but. If you get close enough, there's quite a bit going on. I, there. I'm close and I see it. Yeah, I don't think there's a mustache out there that doesn't have red in it though. It's kind of like a weird no. It's like thing. a facial hair thing. Well, yeah, there's always Johnny red Merrill. Somewhere. Johnny Merrill. Wait, no, uh, Middleton, no red. No, he's just straight salt and pepper. He's like wider. There's a bit. There's, a, there's he, a bit of gray in there yeah. probably too. Yeah, he does. It is a wider Daniel Day Lewis or whatever it is kind yeah. of mustache going on. When those two guys shaved. I was watching that Montreal game, uh, Middleton and Merrill shaved down to the, yeah. you know, was that jarring for you in the locker room? It was. Room? It was actually kind of scary. Yeah, I was like, we're taking an L tonight. Like, this, why did they do that? What's happening? And then you guys won. But, yeah, it was a little disturbing. I, I heard, I didn't see Middleton today, but I heard his mustache is already just bad. Oh, yeah. It, I mean, it, I would say day three <laughs> or four, he already had, like, something there to the point where you could recognize him again because for about three hours the first day, he looked pretty naked. Yeah, I don't know. There. And I, I think, honestly, after the morning skate, it was like, 
half grown back. We'll already. have to get into this later too after we let Shazi go. But Middleton, so what, what's the nickname? Midzy? That's kind of what he goes by. I go I, I go by Midzy. And so. he, he asked the, the media people to call him like his name was Jake. But I think like as he shaved his mustache, it was like a different dude. He actually looked like a Jacob. Yeah, I think like he a did. full Jacob. Yeah. And now he's like back to Jake. Maybe a middle and, and initial like, too. In like 12 more hours, he'll be yeah. back to full Midzy. Yeah, you know he'll be I mean? Midzy like, when he gets that back. But I think right away it was like Jacob. Grade, hey, Jacob. Grade two Jacob <laughs> teacher doing in your attendance again yeah, exactly. like are you here jacob yeah i'm here you got brown patches yeah. on your sport coat <laughs> exactly yeah he was he was a different guy for sure are you are you skating with eck and boldy tonight is that the line or tomorrow night uh no i'm with doer and rossi tomorrow. okay good yeah um how have you uh what what have you learned since being up that surprised you in terms of like what was your biggest surprise um you know, getting into the two towel league here, what what is what's been your biggest surprise well, on the ice or off? It's how impressive the studios for podcasts are at this. That's that's a, I'm going to so. start with that because I've never seen nothing like this. <laughs> yeah, this job's phenomenal, and I can't. I keep finding myself staring at the the Duke Cannon yeah. here, and yeah, I'm you're gonna, struggling to what I'm going to pick with. But make yeah. as much as you want. Get some for the other boys yeah. too. No, um, I think I think for me it's just how unforgiving this league can be sometimes yeah. on on turnovers, on soft plays, on on you think you have a guy but you give him an inch and you don't. So, um I think that, you know, there's that's something in my game that I'm just, I'm I'm trying to clean up 24/7 and be aware of is is um, you know, you give someone an inch and they'll take a mile around here from you. So, just try to play as clean of a game as I can and then um, you know, at the same time know that you're a good player though and know that you can make plays, um, you know, get a little bit of confidence. Um, and, 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 and know your role. I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here to bring energy. I'm here to chip in when I can and, and just be a good teammate. So I think identifying your role right away has made things a little bit easier for me. And, um, you know, I feel like, you know, every day I get a little bit more comfortable with the systems and, and how things work around here. But um, by no means is there a day off around here at all. So um, just trying to bring it every time I, I put the gear on. You were wearing the C in Iowa. Um, so maybe reference those experiences because I don't want to put you out at, at the National League level. But... It, is knowing your role kind of uh, something that's learned over time? Is there an art to it? Because I think you do see people that struggle with, like, you know, and, and I give you a lot of credit because, you know, you came in and your first couple games, if you look at the stat sheet, it was seven, eight minutes. It's not easy to do. It's harder, in my opinion, to play seven minutes a night than it is 21 minutes a night. You know what I mean? And um, to find a way to be effective and to be noticeable in seven minutes and to accept a role and to, to recognize situation in a game on when you can uh, be physical, engage, provide energy, you did all those things right. And it's morphed into more opportunity, more ice time, and that's slowly how you do it. Is that an art, and is that something that is taught? Is it learned? And give me your advice. Yeah, there. I think I think for myself, um, I think that's something that was learned. I think through a lot of of things growing up. I feel like growing up in a blue collar community, um, you know, my parents are extremely hardworking. Um, some injuries and things I've had to persevere through. It's just it's never been given so and that's you know that's the mantra on here it's earned not given um so i think if i got the opportunity to play seven minutes a night at the nhl level I th you, you're not wrong it is hard sometimes um to stay in it a little bit but um for me it was like do everything you can with those seven minutes um whether that's hitting everything that moves right getting pucks out of your zone like that was uh that's where i realized that you got to you got to fit a role at this level. It's a little bit different when I'm in Iowa. I'm getting a few more minutes and, and some different opportunities. But um, while I'm here, you every time you step on the ice, you got you got to make a difference. And um, I feel like for me, I'm a guy that can kind of fly around the ice a little bit. I got no, you know, I like gritty game. I like to be in scrums. Um, I feel like that's something that just just came um, naturally to me a little bit. So, um, but I. You know, knowing your role is, is extremely important, and I feel like sometimes guys can struggle with that a little bit, changing their games from, uh, you know, when we were younger, everyone was a skilled player. Everyone yeah. got to play all the ice times, but, you know, the top of the pyramid here gets pretty thin, and there's only so many guys that can play the 20 minutes a night. So, um, you know, for right now, I'm just trying to bring energy and do the best I can with that. Yeah, that's right. Again, to compliment you, you're kind of a utility knife, too, where you can play, like, a fast physical game, but at the same time, last year, I mean, you, you – 
scored 19 in Iowa in 62 games and um, you know, where you think you're tied for second on the team in points or something like that. Like you're an offensive guy too. It's like you could yeah. score goals if you're put yeah. in that situation. I think that has been recognized and part of the reason why your opportunity continues to grow and then you continue to deliver. But um, yeah, no kudos to you and um, uh, hopefully that all that stuff continues. But uh, do you believe that too, that you, like your game's kind of a Swiss army knife, like you, you can do a lot of things out there. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And um, I've played, you know, all three center positions being here too, whether it be center, left wing or, or right wing, um, power player, penalty kill. I feel like those are all situations I can kind of get into and, um, and succeed with when they come. But I think it all just stems down to hard work again um, to get those opportunities. So but I feel like being a Swiss army knife or doing a little bit of everything is uh Kind of just how I've been my whole career, whatever whatever role or, or tasks needed that night, I feel like I can do a, a pretty good job at filling that role. But um, I, I, I definitely don't shy away from the side of, of uh, you know, getting in somebody's face or getting around that. I enjoy that a little bit too. He's more of a Leatherman than a Swiss Army Knight. Leatherman? Yeah, he's just he's got a little grip. A little more, yeah, leather. Swiss Army Knight's got a toothpick in it, I think. And a tweezer. He's a Leatherman. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I'm going to pack that one around with me if you don't mind. If I uh, snag yeah. that one, I yeah, like that one better. A Leatherman's pull out a Wrangler pants where a Swiss Army knife might be pulled out of like. No, I just like this farm strong Lululemon. mentality for the wild. I think it's great. I think I've been watching the fan base. They seem to really like you. They they like watching. I think they like the blue collar on the green jersey. Um, it looks good. So. Uh, you know, I wish you luck the rest of the way, especially out west. You're getting close to your hometown, I guess, uh, for the next few days. Yeah, we, we stole close a couple. Close-ish. Close-ish. Yeah. yeah, they're going to California, John. Yeah, it's still west. It's. I consider and this. South. I consider this west-ish a little bit still. Let's get yeah. a map. Midwest. Are we yeah, I don't. Here? Yeah. I don't even think I ever had geography. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I mean. California we'll, we'll is a long way from home, and I tell you what, the weather's a lot nicer in California yeah, than it is in Wainwright right now, because I think there's back. already snow on the ground there. So, All right, you're a tough kid, but you took it a little too far here. Um, I don't know if you thought this was a steak from the farm or one of the Angus beef or what it was. Yeah, how did that happen, actually? Yeah, why are we eating this, you know what? Why are you eating that? That was not the intention one bit, but it, that was playoff <laughs> hockey at that point, and... I mean, if I had to choose someone's stick to get a puck, I guess I was willing to do that. So that went in clean, he's, though. I heard I heard you didn't even get hurt there, right? No, like that no, just that looks like that would probably take out a few front rack, a few chicklets or something, but not at all. I came out pretty clean from that, which I'm lucky. But I tell you what, I don't know what the photographer was doing taking that picture, but it's kind of cool. Any yeah. penalty on the play? Yeah, holding the stick. He's yeah. the only guy in the history of, the NA, or of I, hockey to get a holding the stick penalty with his teeth. So for those of you just listening, there's a photo of him, and we'll put it up. And he's in a corner battle with somebody from Milwaukee, and he's just literally got the blade of this guy's stick in his mouth, and he's just playing hockey with a stick in yeah. his mouth. Hockey, holding the yeah. stick and high sticking all in one. But yeah. It's good. definitely a unique picture for sure. That is good. So a steak, uh, what's your go-to steak? Uh, like let's say he's so biased now. I bet he doesn't home. like. He doesn't like you? any steak. Is he like? Is he like pinky finger up on the steak? Like yeah. it has to be a certain. No, well, here's the thing. A lot, of, a lot of the beef down here is corn. Is, is corn yeah. fed around here? And I feel like at home, we take it. For, actually, my dad was just down here, and he does. He's not been in the states a whole bunch in, in his life, and he he goes, "We are spoiled with the meat we get home because he he realized that coming down here." But I feel like the more important thing to a steak is how it's cooked before and yeah. how it's marinated. So. Um, I feel like you can take uh, maybe less, lesser quality beef, but if you do it right, um, that, you know, on the cooking side of it, you can make it pretty Have good. you found a place you like their steak around here? Yeah, I like uh, where I can go to Costco, bring it home, season <laughs> it myself, and cook it on the barbecue. I think that's where I prefer it. He, he likes the, the ground beef at Costco's Red Costco's got the meat dialed, by the way. Yeah, yeah exactly. So. Hey, no, no, there's there's a lot of good spots. I got to get out and, and figure out and find a few more spots here. I feel like we've been on the road quite a bit, but you will, yeah, you will, absolutely. Well, man, you got anything else for him? No, I just, but I still want to know, like, what is it, ribeye? Like, what do I need? Oh yeah, ribeye for strip? sure. Rib yeah, no, I like a ribeye the best. Yeah, it seems like guys, people that know, you cattle, need a, you need a little bit of marbling on your steak though. Like, yeah. you don't want it to be too tough. So if you can get a little bit of fat on there to add some flavor, not too much, but the ribeye is a good. I like the New York strip. Christmas, I don't know why. Christmas at the Shaw House is that a prime rib? Like what? No, I think Christmas at the Shaw House, we're, we're still firing up a, a turkey or something and, and all the sides. But I honestly, if it was up to me, I'd probably rather have a steak on my plate for sure. Nice. Well, I tell you, we're out of time, man. We're going to let you go, but we're going to have to have you back. We're going to have that guitar here. You're going to have yeah, to sing us yeah. a song. Let's, come, let's do this again. 
Absolutely. I, I might even have to show. get the intro music at Shaw, like singing something for us. We won't he have to. He could do a wild on seven. <laughs> there we'll we go. Because the license fees are. There we go. Move, so. It's Zach Bryan, Morgan Wallen behind him. Mixing this would be like a karaoke dream with his yeah, backdrop, this too. Good. This is good. And this is chapter one. Uh, no, it was a, a blast chatting with you, man. So thanks for coming and joining us. And we'll have to do it again for sure. Have a good Absolutely. road trip, brother. All right. Thanks, guys. Man, that was awesome. Uh, Mason, God, just a good dude, too. Like, he's. He's the same on the ice as he is off. Energizer Bunny, just he's, all entertainment. Like, he's perfect. A lot of these guys from Iowa, they I think they, when they come on the pod, they don't want to say anything that could get them in trouble or, you know, sh he was just an authentic character and a pretty, I mean, what a gritty, awesome dude. Well, I want to go to Wainwright, like, tomorrow. I know. It's, Grandma's and it's, house for breakfast. His story's great, too. Like, I wanted to ask him. You know, about the recoveries, like what's the go-to cold tub, hot tub? I wanted to get you into that cold tub. That's so a guy you root record. for, though, man. Yeah, he is. I mean, this is this is, a, this is a fan favorite right here, Mason Shaw. Yeah, I love that. And I, I'm, I'm with him. I'm a big ribeye guy. I wish I knew something. I just have trouble pairing things with a ribeye. Oh, well, I can help you. What I would do is... Uh, I would get some Jimmy's uh, oh. vegetable dips. Veggie. They actually kind of have the hat trick of dips. They got spinach, they got dill, and they got ranch. Uh, people are crazy for the ranch. They put it on everything. Uh, the dill is, is very versatile. And then the spinach has kind of got that distinct flavor that you like. And if you really want to go off the grid, go with the smoky dip. Holy smokes. And that's basically put it on a burger put it on a sandwich. I mean, we're off the board at that point. That's you, the cool uncle. You know what I did with it the other day? What? Chili. And I used it as like the sour cream in the chili. It was pretty good. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, and dip I like and that. chips with it. I like that innovation. Did you have a big glass of water after you got done? Well, I had to because it was a little, the chili was a little spicy, so I had to wash it down with something. And then it turned out that was a bad idea uh, because that water makes things a little bit more spicy. But thank goodness um, the water was crisp and clean. <laughs> I bet it was. Yeah, it certainly was. And you know who I have to thank for that? Uh, Aquarius Home Systems Aqu Services. Yep. Aquarius Home Services. Yep. Uh, absolutely. Actually, my K5 system at the sink just had an issue with it. I called Derek. Uh, your buddy. buddy. Yeah. He wears booties when he comes and to he your says, house. He says, that's under warranty. Mind you, I bought this house like eight years ago. Boom, somebody next day fixed. Water up and running. Just amazing the customer service from these guys. Um, yeah, I mean, they they do great. He comes over, he puts the booties on, they respect the house, they respect us, they take care of it. Customer service is second to none. They've earned the right to be recommended, and I recommend them. But hey, listen, it's also not just water. They do other stuff too. So as you're coming into winter, you're getting, you know the Christmas lights up and one of the switches isn't working. They've got electrical services. They can take care of you. Call Aquarius Home Services. Plumbing issues, you name it, they can handle it. Aquarius Home Services, check them out. Uh, again, earning the right to be recommended. I feel like you, you gave them like three ads and I only did like a third of an ad for Jimmy's there. You kind of like, you, you, so you like, have some inferior complex. Do you ever feel like you feel like I'm, you know, that you know how I've that. given you some it's because Jimmy's. of my mustache, you know, how I've given you some Jimmy's. Yeah. And like you've never given me one glass of water from your house. Like you should come in someday and just have a cold glass of water for me to try. Okay. I can do that. So I'm just going to do the tagline to balance things out. Deal. Don't you be messing with the dressing. You know, Shaw didn't take his bush light soap with him. What are we going to do? Well, we can deliver a care package. Okay. We will. Uh, he, I love how he goes, we can't get bush light up in Canada, but I like it a lot down here. Yeah. So, uh, all right. So. The the wild and Shaw, I mean, he brought the energy. He was great. He's tons of mojo. But he makes me feel better about the season, to be honest. Right. Just in terms of if that guy is in the room, that he doesn't feel like an uptight dude. No wellness check. How are you doing as a as a wild fan right now? Like, how are you feeling? Uh, I feel like the season's been a little bit um, joyless, and and what I mean by that is. Like I'm watching Kirk Cousins on the plane all the time, dancing with chains on himself on the Viking side. And um, I just feel like we're kind of, we're holding our breath a little bit because we had the rough start. It's like, we're always just kind of clawing back and it just, it hasn't felt fun. You need that That's, spark that. Yeah. It hasn't felt joyful or fun. There hasn't been a Superman punch or a Eric Zanak or a grief lion or 
Um, and I, don't, I don't know, maybe it'll be the reverse retro or something's going to change that energy, but it's just, it feels a little tight. Do you think it's possible that Kirk Cousins and the Minnesota Vikings stole the mojo of the Minnesota Wild somehow over the course of the summer? Because it seems like the Vikings have it right now. Kirk all chained out. I know. Flexing on the bird. Cuz. I, I think we should have him do uh, Let's, Let's Play, play hockey, hockey with in no, just the chains. No shirt. Because if he was dumb enough to do it, we would take all that energy back. Just steal it. Like we, yeah. I was going to say we either have to go to Minneapolis and physically steal that back, that mojo, find it and steal it. I wonder if it's the in the chains. Darkness, or that's even that's even a better idea uh, to have invite it here. Yeah. Just kind of track Come it. Come over with your boys. And then lock it down. Yeah. They, we they need, need that mojo, that iced out Kirk on the plane mojo. Yeah, or just Zuki jumping into Felino's arms, or I, I'm just waiting for some signature moments, some weirdness, some uh, you know, pants on the ground, Brett Favre. Like, give me, give me something, you know, that's not on the menu. You know, give me the, uh, give me the secret menu item. I, I'm just looking for. I, I want a little bit more fun. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm with you. The Vikings, though, like they if. Look at what they're doing right now and the excitement that's around it. It's very similar to the wild and the things that occurred last year. I mean, you think about the miraculous comebacks and the like the improbable odds that the wild had to overcome in a lot of these games, multi-goal deficits, you name it. It was like a magical year. The Vikings four come, come from behind victories this year of their seven, right? Mm -hmm. um, big games, big spots. One, I think they've got six one-score wins. So, I mean, they're tight games, too. It's They're just, like, finding ways to win, and they're all, I mean, right now I think you see it. That group is light and fun, and, uh, I mean, I, I don't know, man. It's pretty impressive, but we got to find a way to get that mojo back. Yeah, and I, I think we will. I, we did well on the road last time, and I guess now we're going uh, West Coast swing here, right? Kings on Tuesday, Ducks back-to-back -back Wednesday. Yeah. I'm going to bet. Then... I'm betting that cracking game heavy. In Vegas for my guys' trip Friday night because I think they probably didn't feel good about how they yeah. played against them last time. Well, and it's in Shaw's backyard, so his family would probably just <laughs> make the trip. It'd just be like a 15 minute I ride bet, for him. I bet they would actually bike over probably <laughs> yeah. at a tandem bike. But then, uh, and then the Sharks at home still keeping it West Coast, fish tacos, but back in St. Paul. Yeah, so four games there. Yeah, you're pretty good at keeping it on point. Uh, November. Yeah, I was so shaken when Middleton and Merrill shaved. Just watching warm-ups, I felt uh, seeing Middleton without a mustache was like walking in on him without clothes or something. I really felt uh, uncomfortable. Like um, I saw something I should have never seen. It was. It was. I, I respect him for going down to the studs at the start of the contest to be fair, but it. Uh, I was really concerned that was going to take us in a nosedive for the whole season, but we won that night against Montreal. But um, I guess it's coming back, which is good. How are you feeling about yours? My, I'm, I think I'm gonna. It's gonna. It's gonna disappear. I think you're not gonna make it the I whole throw month. On the towel. Well, this one's not about me. In the past, I like last year the team wasn't involved in it, and it's not that I, I didn't raise like a ton of money, but it's about you know, generating and creating awareness for men's health. And yep. um, I think the guys obviously have a, a bigger stage. My wife is kind of busting my chops. You know, on your iPhone, you'll get these updates like one year ago, yeah. three years ago today. All these like memories that we have from November throughout the last like six or seven years. You have a mustache. Just a greasy, dirty little mustache. Yeah. I've ruined every family photo for like seven years. I was like, enough. My wife said to me at one point, she's oh, like, oh, this is torch. this is cute that you do this once a month every year. Why don't I just not shave my pits for like July? You know, and we'll just I'll just have huge hairy pits all of July. <laughs> is it? Would you like that? Because that's what it's like when you're putting that mustache into our family life every November. I mean, that's kind of, it is a little tough. So you're not going to stick it out, you don't think? I don't think so. Well, I mean, what do you think? Well, I, I think you can do it. I, when are you on the broadcast next? 
uh, maybe like, Sunday. Maybe that San Jose game. You got any of that Thanksgiving stuff, like the Toronto game or like? Yeah, I'll have a bunch. You'll of those be things. peaking. Yeah, I think you. Stick There's it no out. peak. That's the issue with my mustache. There's you no. You gotta peak. stick it out, brother. Its strength is actually its weakness. But it's so bad. It's but if good. we're trying to have more fun, we're trying to get loose. We're trying to get a big fly collar on this wild team. You can't shave. But I, I mean, we also can't manufacture it. I do like the the buy in from everybody there too. Like Shaw's grown out, it looks like yeah. a nice little red mustache. There's a lot of other dudes out there that seem like they're in it. Duhame looked like maybe he had one going. Obviously, Merrill, um, yep. Middleton. I think it even looked like Erickson Eck was getting in on it. Like his was, <laughs> his might beat me for so bad. It's good. Addison's was back and like the like the legit cat. Yeah, he's got back. great dirt. <laughs> uh, but I, in all honesty, I mean, those guys on the stage, it's good for them to be all in and to doing this. I, I respect it's not out of Middleton and Johnny Merrill and the guys for being a part of this. It does uh, create and drive awareness for men's health. So if anybody that's out there, go ahead and donate. Uh, Movember, Minnesota Wild page. It's also fun, too. So they've got a promo going. The end of the month, the Arizona game, if you have a mustache, you can go down. You're at the game. You can go down onto the ice, I believe, and you'll have a photo with those guys. And they're trying to break, like, a record for most photos. Of really? With mustaches. That's a great deal. But it can't be, like, a goatee. They have actual rules. It has to be a mustache, so it can't be connected. But any dude with a mustache, I suppose if you're if you're a gal and have a mustache, you can too. My... Yeah, for sure, it's fluid. I I think uh, that's great to be able to get down there and do that. Wouldn't that be fun? Like yeah. you're in that photo, and yeah. especially the Arizona game. Uh, I think this reverse retro. You know, the guys are breaking in these uniforms. Um, they're awesome. Bring in those North Star feelings, those deep, deep emotions. Those star breezers. The star pants are nice. Are just awesome. You don't say breezers. I do say breezers. So I, I'm actually, I wanted to ask Shaw about this too. And I've talked about this on the podcast before, but Minnesotans are like the only ones yeah. that say, when you ask where they're from, they say the suburb. Like if you go anywhere else in the country and you say like, where are you from? They say the city. Yeah. Like let's say I was just in St. Louis. So let's say um, somebody's from St. Louis. They'd be from Clayton, which is a suburb of St. Louis. Yep. They're going to say, I'm from St. Louis, Minnesota. If you ask them, where are you from? It's White Bear Lake. Right. And yeah, so we're provincial. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so Shaw was obviously very similar in that. He's like, I'm yeah, he Lincoln. wasn't liking that. Uh, Lloydminster, that's like saying you're from Hugo, right? From White Bear Lake, right? No one wants that. The uh, but these reverse retros, eight games in them. I think I might just try to go to as many of those eight games, and it's like I'm in a quantum leap and I'm just in this different wild zone with brighter colors and. That could be a way to get some joy going. That, that would be. And so reflecting on last year, I think it was actually Hockey Day last year. The where, first time? I don't know if it was the first time, but it was reverse retros. And then the Kings had their purple reverse retros on. And Matt Dumba scored like an OT game winner. And the, the like the roof was blown off the joint. Um, so maybe those reverse retros will bring some of that magic back. I know the nostalgia has the crowd at a different level. We play uh, Pittsburgh the first time. That'll be fun. So Sid the Kid will be here, reverse retro. So that's, I think, November You know what else I don't know that I should know? Is if one team's in reverse retro, is the other team then in their reverse retro? I don't think that has to be the case. It was cool that day that it aligned with the Kings. Yeah, I don't think it is because I think they try to wear them at home. Maybe not always at home, though. No, because I remember Kirill jumping into the boards, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. But I think I'm going to get on this reverse retro train. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know about the... I love the green helmet. My favorite is a green helmet. Yeah. I, it's like North Star helmet. No, it's it's good. I. But what do you think? I mean, uh, so we have been playing well. Uh, we had the 5-1-1 one, and one through 7, and I guess we split the two games at home here. But what are you, how are you feeling? What's your mood of the nation? You Well... I think that they're, you're right, where it seems like they're coming up for air, you know, instead of their... It's it, why so like serious. Swim or they're tubing on top of the water. It's a, it, Even though they're in a decent spot, just they're coming up for water, taking breaths and then going back down. And there's a fist fight under that water and everybody's battling through something right now and go back up for air, take a big breath, go back down and battle. You know what I mean? And uh, hopefully once they get off or past this injury bug that, you know, they can just sit there and kind of lay on the back on the top of the water, float and get back to just playing hockey. 
but the I think and it was a concern I talked about it because if you look at the roster and you look at what the wild are trying to do coming out of Montreal where they had that tough practice and they switched up lines they broke up Dumba and Brodeen and the grief line was not blown up but Felino was not alongside Erickson Ack and they're just like hey we're sending a new message that this is a different team than last year so we're going to do different things just because it worked last year doesn't mean we're going to do it this year and we've talked about that on the podcast but that can be a positive thing because we know the result of last year it was a first round exit so changing things up can be a good thing um, but what I do believe though is uh, fundamentally this team has to be rooted in a certain style of play and I think its foundation is in effort and you know physicality and you know playing defensively sound and structured and kind of just simple hockey you know kind of grit before skill and that skill before grit and the pieces that they lost in succession were like grit pieces yeah you know identity pieces it's Hartman, Foligno, Foligno Greenway. Duhame, Greenway it's all of a sudden a big part of your identity is gone and this isn't a shot on the, the other guys that are put in but this is anybody in any situation in life if you have your strengths and your weaknesses and you're put into a situation where you have to all of a sudden provide something that is not one of your strengths, you can do that in the short term, but it's very hard to do consistently in the long term. So you're asking somebody like um, Dewar and uh, or Rossi or somebody like, hey, guys, I need you to I need you to win the wall battles tonight. It's what you have to do. Are they capable? Absolutely. hundred percent. But is that their bread and butter? Is that what they were brought here to do? You know, are they supposed to win 95% of these, like somebody like Erickson Eckwood or Marcus Foligno? Maybe in the short term, but it's going to be super hard to sustain. So right now, I think that's where they're at. It's like just kind of tread water till they can get back to the style of hockey that they have to play. And these guys are going to have to step up and play uh, a style of hockey that maybe isn't fully to their strength. And that's going to take commitment, I think. And uh, it'll be a good test going out west and seeing what happens there. And I think that those teams are gettable. These games are winnable. I think they're, if you're circling it, you say, all right, we've got to for sure win two of these games between um, L.A., Anaheim, and uh, Seattle. You've got to win two of them. And if it's entirely possible that we take six points of that. So um, that's the way I'm looking at it. But, yeah, right now they've they've got to find a way to just get through this rough patch. Yeah, I think – I think this team is going to be good on the road all year. I, I don't know what it is, but I think I, I the main thing I'm looking for is just a, like something um, surprising, uh, some moment, some almost Twitter moment, you know, yeah. a big yeah. fight, a uh, a goal that you can't believe. Um, I think the whole team needs a wow moment to just where it's just a thing that you can't quite process because right now we're just uh, – trying hard you know and i just i just kind of want to see something that makes them all just sort of relax and react you know to something i don't know what it's going to be it could just be going on a heater here through the west coast but um we're kind of we're, we're right there i yeah, mean there's no right there. damage but we haven't definitely thrown the hammer down yet. Dude, if you look at the standings though it's crazy how it's hard to get up there. Well, and it's different than what it looked like. I screenshot this is a week ago now, but the teams that were out of the playoffs was like St. Louis, Minnesota, Colorado, Colorado. teams that were in like Chicago, Dallas. Yeah, teams that you didn't think were going to be there were all of a sudden there. Um, you know, and even go out to the east, it was crazy out there too. Like uh, Ottawa, like some of these teams that were rebuilding, so to speak. I've kind of figured it out. Like, it seems like there's way more parity all of a sudden this year than there was even last year. And uh, so there's no easy outs at all. Well, I was looking at Seattle, right? So they, Yeah, Seattle's a great example. We had this just clunker of a game. Like, I mean, if it's sadly, if you happen to go to that Seattle game last Thursday with your family, that's a tough one. Um, but they, uh, I was looking, they had won three in a row before they beat us. And then I looked and they went to Pittsburgh and beat them after us. Yeah. So, gee, I don't know what's going on with with Seattle, my least favorite team in the NHL. But they, um, they're they're I, for whatever an expansion team a year ago. I mean, they're definitely figuring some stuff out. So that wasn't that wasn't an anomaly that yeah. they came in like, and beat us. Like, look at the Pacific right now. Vegas didn't make the playoffs last year. Seattle didn't make the playoffs last year. L.A. I think squeaked into the playoffs they last did. year. Yeah, Chicago sitting in a wild card spot didn't make the playoffs last year. Winnipeg no playoffs last year. Dallas. 
you know, Colorado's in third in the Central. But then let's go to the teams that are outside the playoffs right now. Calgary, Minnesota, Nashville, Vancouver, Anaheim, San Jose, St. Louis in the, is the caboose in 10th place and yeah. are out of it right now. It's it's almost would be more believable if they flip that yeah. right upside down and, and did it the other way, right? Like it's, it's kind of crazy how things have gone early on. So it's still early on in anyone's game, no question about it. Nobody's writing anyone off. But, um, yeah, intriguing start to the year. So you went to St. Louis with your daughter, right? Yeah, I did. Uh, and it was just you and one daughter. Yeah, it was like a daddy daughter trip. And it was just I, the Instagram looked great. You were uh, you got to just like hang with your kid. Yeah, it was fun. I realized too that I think in a maturity level, I paused at twelve years old and I stopped like aging because <laughs> I wanted to hang around with like the kids and you know I skipped all the stuff with the adults. They were just it was a lot of fun. We had a blast. It was a soccer tournament. Soccer took a back seat to hanging out, which I think is important at those tournaments. You know, like you want to do well, but um you're there with your buddies and they have like you might have some rules these days where you can't go in the swimming pool before your game it's like no come on oh you were free cannonball you were free so and and the i understand the wild played a role in this trip in terms of the vehicle selection yeah i don't know if my daughter's a big fan too and so we're walking through enterprise rent a car and we had rented an suv but something caught her eye and it was this forest green mini cooper and she's like that's the one dad so i walk out and as we're getting our car i was like you know what can we pivot to that car they're like yeah take that one so there we were driving around the mini pooper i just like that she eats sushi as well yeah you got him at a young age so like you're maybe she's not 12 maybe you're like 16 yeah a 12 year old's liking sushi like you've done a good job parent she's 10 she's 10 10 sushi's her favorite food i don't know what's going on how did that happen I don't did know. you live in japan no never i would have oh, played there though that's great you would have been nice. so good there yeah. all-star yeah you would have won an emmy for right. sure in uh hiroshima region uh you got anything else you had a hartman thing i thought or something no, what I will say, though, is uh, this will be a nice little tease. So if any of you guys, we're going to reward the people that listen to each podcast. If you go back to the Bill Guerin podcast where we okay. talked about uh, a the, little something. Prank. Yeah, a little something. Uh, it's kind of a big week for that. So stay tuned. And you feel comfortable the pulling this off? Well, I don't know. We don't know who's going to be pulling it off, but um, you're going to Little Birdie told me that something's possible. I don't want to spoil anything right now, but... I like it. Yeah. This is the energy we need. That's what I'm saying. This could be a spark. Yeah, this could be... Literally off, could be a spark. Pants on the ground, chains, cuz. This is what we need. Well, good luck with that. You got a mole? Uh, we might... There, there might be. Like, you're asking some tough questions for me right now. Okay. It's, uh, so if you haven't listened... Go back and listen to that podcast. Go back to, to the it, it, All lights have been green. I suppose there can be a pun intended there. Um, today, if if you're intrigued as to what the heck I'm talking about, today I might become a felon for the first time. Okay. Um, so there's that. Well, I like that. We'll we'll have people go back and we'll see if this can uh, get things get things going in the right direction as well. I want to play one little sound bite before we go because we've talked about this quite a bit. This is exactly what we need. To co- we the, need more of even the sound of him when he's talking. The caboose. It's just full of joy, and there's no undershirt on. Most of the buttons aren't buttoned. He's just living free when he says this. And I, I think it's very fitting that this is the back end of our show here today. It felt like we had that swagger. Like when I came in here, there was uh, <laughs> no one's buttholes got tight. Like nothing like that in those 25 games I played. And then we, this is exactly how it felt tonight again. Oh, I love the that. magic is coming back. I love it. That's what I want. I want that. <laughs> all the time i want so much more of that that's the highlight of the season so far is him saying that and the anxiety is it's in his fanny pack packed away we're uh we're, we're gonna be okay we just gotta stay loose maybe we just gotta have him on the podcast and then everything's gonna feel different after that all right let's do it i think shawzy by the way rock star yeah he's a good one so i'm rooting for him i think most of the wild fans will let's get after it let's have a sweet trip out west let's beat up on the uh fish tacos and Fifi and the silver helmets or whatever they're doing out west. Knock that Hollywood sign over. And say hello to Shaw's family. We're here. Till it's here. So bad. It's not that close, is it?